Welcome back, beautiful people. Kamina, the coach here. Hey, coming back at you with a video on doing what you believe in, following, doing uh, your actions and your work, actually aligning with your values and the connection that has to, to happiness and peace of mind. Uh, the generations, the, the two generations behind me, the millennials and the Zs, so I'm, I'm 41 uh, as of December 3rd, 2020, um, and then January 16th, I'll be 42. So, um, excuse me. So these kids were interviewed uh, on a documentary and the word sellout is not even a thing among this generation because people are kind of willing to do anything to make money. And um, at the cost of, of values or, um, someone's dignity, their dignity, it doesn't matter just as long as we're making money or at least overall. I mean, that's a generalization. If you're younger than that, please don't be offended. <laughs> but so I'm just speaking about me as a 40 year old woman, um, really, really coming into what's important to me and what I value and a really big part of who I am is my pro-blackness and my that my pro-blackness doesn't extend to just um, black Americans my pro-blackness extends to all Af all diaspora of diaspora of Africa and all Africans all black Africans so this is something I'm very very passionate about uh, uh, studying our history, um, uh, teaching our history, not just to our children, but to the world. These things are very, very, very important to me at my core. So um, even if I was looking at a partner, I wouldn't be able to be with someone who didn't see eye to eye with me on these, this, this core value. So racism is a big problem for me, uh, for any of you who have been following my journey, when I came back to the United States in March of 2020, um, when we had just entered quarantine, um, I took a job uh, at a charter a charter school for the arts, and I left that school because um, it's a tiny school, and in that tiny school, we can count five acts, overt acts of racism, in one month, uh, one act of extreme bigotry. I was miserable. I was only there for one month. I was miserable and I left. Um, I, I can't do my students any good. I, I'm not any good to myself. I'm, I'm highly sensitive. I'm very emotional. And I recognize my core values. And if I'm not, and, and another core value for me, honesty, integrity, telling the truth, even when it hurts, um, but not being a twat. That's one of my videos, telling the truth, but not being a twat. So honesty and integrity. Integrity is doing the right thing when nobody's looking. And I think we've lost a lot of that these days. I think people are always looking to do what they can get away with. And that really irks me. So within myself, I'm pretty, I'm pretty strict up with myself about that. So honesty and integrity. And again, um, my pro-blackness. These are, these are some very, very core, core values for me. So when they were violated at my job, when these things were violated, I had to leave. So now I'm going to revert to Africa. But so it's possible if you know that I've been to Saudi Arabia or China, you could say, well, how did you reconcile? Like, so the thing is, is I've developed a lot. I spent the last decade overseas. So I've developed and grown a lot. And at one point it was all about where the money was. Right? It, it was all about where the money was. I went to China because they were the first um, country to offer me a job. Once I got the experience, I went to Saudi Arabia. I kept going back to Saudi Arabia because the job was great. Um, the cost of living is low. Um, I just, I like Princess Nora in Saudi Arabia. But I wasn't looking at, so when, when did I finally leave Saudi Arabia? When did I finally abandon the idea of being in Saudi Arabia? Well, that happened two years ago when, um, so aside from the fact that the crown prince had the, the reporter killed, aside from that, um, he imprisoned 
uh, six or seven women and I think two men who had been speaking out on the internet about women's rights. Now, mind you, he had already given them the right to drive, but he imprisoned these women and one of the women was my, one of our director's mothers. And we're talking about a retired PhD, highly educated woman. They waterboarded her, they electrocuted her. And now, so this may seem like, oh, okay, well, they're, if you don't know anything about Saudi or Saudis, then you're like, oh, you know, Saudis are barbaric. That doesn't surprise you. Well, it should surprise you because they don't do that to their people. They, they, they have historically not done that to their own people, especially not for like something more serious. They were trying to get them to confess to treason. And if they would have confessed to treason, they would have killed them. Um, this is really unprecedented in Saudi Arabia, especially for them to do this to women, uh, to their own country uh, women. It's very unusual. And when this woman, when this, when this uh, woman I worked with spoke to me about it and kind of pled with me to speak out about it because I'm American and she felt like my voice mattered. <laughs> really does it but because she felt like people would listen to me because I'm an American it was really it was it was too close for me to ignore so I spoke out about it and people begged me to keep my mouth shut I spoke out about it I spoke out about it and at the end of that year I left <laughs> and I suspect it was probably not safe for me to go back and really I don't want to be there um, that, that crown prince is going to be, he's young, he's going to be there for a very long time. And um, while he is moving the country forward with rights, it's really all about money for him. And he's, um, he's quite brutal. He is, he's quite brutal. Um, so I never, I don't usually speak out about politics, but it's, that I'm just talking about following your values. So at this point, that was when I decided to leave Saudi Arabia. Um, not to say that if a short-term contract, a little three-month three stint came up, that I wouldn't maybe try that. But I don't want to be in Saudi Arabia. I don't want to be in the Middle East. Um, I don't want to be in the Middle East anymore. Um, I had never really wanted to go to Africa because... Um, the cost of living in a lot of places is quite high and the salary for teachers has historically been quite low and um, health care because I'm kind of sickly. So I've avoided Africa um, as a continent to teach on for a lot of years. Oh, and their, their standards are quite high and I salute them for having high standards. I just didn't qualify. <laughs> I didn't qualify for a lot of years to go to Africa. Now that I have my MED, I, I do and enough years. Um, so now I qualify to go to Africa. So what is all the hubbub about Kamina? So uh, my predecessor sent me a picture today of sixth and seventh grade class and there were only two Africans in the picture. The rest were, the majority were Arabs with uh, maybe one or two white people. So where I'm supposed to go to work in Africa is um, in Ingra, in Tanzania, Tanzania. And uh, it's a small place. It's not a really big metropolitan place. So. This private school is so expensive in this little small town that the locals can't even afford to go there. Um, I've been upset about it all day. <laughs> she sent me the picture and I just, I didn't even respond. It was just a courtesy that she was sending the picture and I didn't respond. I, I sent her, she sent me an email. I sent her the paperwork she wanted in the email, but I didn't respond to seeing the picture. Um, because it was a little bit like getting kicked in the stomach. Um, so we have this school in Africa, but it's too expensive for the Africans to afford. What are we doing about this? What are we doing about this? What's the point of this? And so we talked about training the local teachers so that they can go out. But when local teachers go out, they're not, if, if they've been trained well and they have good qualifications, they're not going to go to a, a, a public school. 
they're going to go to a private school because private schools are going to pay them more. So what happens to the kids in the, the public school? So this is, yes, this is a thing in the United States. This, for me, this is more important in Africa. After studying Africa extensively, I understand or I have a better, a better understanding of how the transatlantic slave trade over 300, 400 years decimated Africa of its youth. So right now, Africa is very young. Africa is very young. They have the largest youthful population in the world. And so I think that we really need to be focusing on reaching these kids. But, and I was excited to go, and I've studied a lot of African history as told by Africans to be versed enough to go there and do the country that I'm going to justice and do these kids justice. However, I'm unwilling to go somewhere and participate in colonization and gentrification. Um, gentrification meaning, you know, making something so expensive that the locals can't afford it. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Making, making something so expensive that the locals can't afford it. And when there's, they're struggling even to build their infrastructure, I'm feeling very emotional about this. So I haven't decided for sure, but I'm not, and, I, and all the teachers in my teachers group seem to feel that I should go, oh, it is, it is. Um, at the end of the day, it really comes down to aligning what you're doing with what you truly believe. If you don't know what you truly believe and you're unhappy, it's possible that you might be doing something that's tied to what you value. Because if you're doing things that contradict your values, you're not going to be happy in the long run. You're just not. There's no way that I could have stayed in the military. I was in the military when I was younger, yes, yes. There was no way I could have stayed in the military once I started awakening. There's no way that I could have done that because it goes against my values. It goes against my values. So this isn't really about the decision if I'm going to go or not going to go. This video is about aligning what you're doing with your values. And if you're unhappy and if you, if you find yourself in a perpetual state of just you just don't feel good, you feel kind of icky and you don't know why, it's potentially because you're not aligning what you're doing with your values. And I think that that, has, that that can potentially erode your soul over time. It will erode your soul. And because now I am more aware and my eyes are more open, I recognize that as much as I want to go to Africa now, I do, as much as I want to go to Africa now, um, I don't want to go be a part of the problem. I don't. I don't want to go be a part of the problem. I want to be a part of the solution, and that's imperative to me. So if I'm able to find a way to frame it so that I feel like I am able to be part of the solution, I don't know but I know that it makes me feel uncomfortable thinking about it right now. So we will see. We will see. All right. So that's all. And until next time, wishing you light, love, peace, and joy. See you next time.